This meeting is being recorded. Hello, hi, good evening. Welcome to AccuCheck Wealthy. Thank you so much for joining the session before time. We absolutely love our AccuCheck Wealthy family and the eagerness you have to join us on every weekend for a new set of information for your diabetes. Welcome, welcome, welcome all our lovely AccuCheck Wealthy users to our special session today. Yes, we have an external help, external senior member who is going to guide us on a lot of information today. Lot of insights for each one of us. Let us learn from our special guest tonight. Before that, warm welcome to each one of you. Hello, Mr. Harish. Hello, Mr. Vinod. Good evening, Ajay Kumar ji. Hello, Nayan. Hi, Dr. Arvin. Hello, Amol. Hello, Mr. Yadav. Hello, Ashok ji. Hello, Mr. Vishal. Hello, Mr. Ishwaran. Good evening. Thank you so much for being associated with us. Good news for all of us. We are now a family of 1,25,000 users and we are more than happy to help each one of you. Thank you so much for being associated with AccuCheck Wealthy program. Keep working on your health. Keep taking care of yourself all with all our natural support and our team and our guidance is always there with you. All right, so let's start today's discussion. Yes, you all are right. We have a special host today. We have a special doctor whom we have specially organized for all of you to have a session tonight. We have Dr. Bhavna Kalwala with us, a senior MBBS specialist with more than 5,000 patient experiences somebody who's an expert in lifestyle modification, diabetes management, hypertension, cholesterol, and heart diseases, a senior professional in wealthy therapeutics who's responsible for creating and taking care of real-world evidences and clinical trial for all our lovely programs, creating therapies, creating clinical content for all of us. I think any sort of introduction would be a short-lived one for you, Dr. Bhavna. Thank you so much for being associated with us. And we welcome you on behalf of the entire AccuCheck Wealthy family. Over to you. And first of all, thank you so much for the warm welcome, Prithuja. And thank you for the elaborate introdu introduction that you have given for me. Thank you so much. So as Vipuja has mentioned, I'm Dr. Bhavna. I'm a general practitioner. So today I'm going to discuss like how an um, un, uh, it's like when you are proper, when the blood sugars are maintained in a proper way, you don't have to worry about other complications or anything. When the blood sugars are maintained in a systematic way, like it's a structured way in a systematic approach, then you don't have to worry about any sort of ill effects from the, this sort of metabolic syndrome. Okay. But uh, today I'm going to discuss like what effects it shows on our kidneys. Like if when it's not properly maintained, or when the blood sugar ranges are fluctuating in your body, what sort of effect it shows on your kidneys and how to cope up with that and how to prevent that. So now I'm going to share a screen so that you can see. Yes, so, yes, it's visible and audible. Please continue, yes. Dr. Bam. Thank you. So diabetes and kidney diseases. This is our topic of discussion for today. So later it's, uh, so to begin with, what is the role of the kidney? So what is the function of the kidney? What does a kidney do? Kidney is nothing but in, it's a filtering unit. It's a 
filtering unit in our body in our biological system it acts in such a way that it removes all the impurities and all the waste in a sense kidney works like a washing machine so there's a sort of uh, uh, i have to explain this like uh, whenever a washing machine removes all the dirt from the clothes and as if it makes the uh, clothes clean the same way these kidneys also work so here this kidneys work with a proper minor tiny filtering units they are nothing but they are called as nephrons so what is the work of these kidneys they usually the kidney filters the blood and it removes all the waste as well as uh, all the um, uh, toxins from our body it sends all this waste material and toxins into the urine and that is flushed out of the body like urine in the form of urine all these toxins as well as all the waste matter has been uh, will be flushed out so when kidneys also helps in controlling of the blood pressure and here uh, it functions in a such a way that it uh, even uh, removes the excess water from our body so what happens is whenever a kidney can't work efficiently then the fluctuation in the blood pressure you can see the rise as well as fall in the uh, uh, blood pressure you can notice at that time so they also help in the production of rbc that is red blood cells are nothing but blood cells so the next thing is how it functions like how, so as i mentioned like there are a tiny tiny filtering structures called nephrons and within that nephrons there is a unit called glomerulus here you can see this glomerulus okay so in this glomerulus what happens is whenever an impure blood enters here through certain arteries so it gets filtered here and again the pure blood is sent out so all these impurities gets filtered here so what all you can see so here all the proteins here uh, it efficiently filters the waste material as well as toxins and the same way it sends to in the form of pure so here the other thing what you can notice is if the blood sugars are not maintained properly like if there is no proper control in the blood sugar then these high blood sugar levels may decrease the efficiency of the kidneys so that leads to inefficient filtration and that eventually leads to a uh, loss of proteins and uh, loss of more amount of uh, uh, like uh, inefficient filtration of waste that is waste will be remaining in the body itself and more toxin accumulation occurs in the body so whenever this sort of phenomenon gets disturbed so uh, the efficiency of kidneys gradually decreases and it leads to diabetic kidney diseases so what happens here how does this get damaged so as i mentioned like all the extra fluid in the body this everything will be filtered here but whenever there is problem with our kidney what happens is the fluid starts accumulating in the body so whenever if someone if some if some patient has any kidney disease you can notice that there is swelling in the feet as well as ankles you can see that that is because of accumulation of the fluid in the body like and one more thing is this uh, wherever you can uh, see if in this sort of uh, situation when kidney is not able to filter uh, in efficiently then some proteins from the blood will also enter into the urine and this protein this is called as proteinuria you can see this sort of minor proteins in the urine so the retained water and salts all this leads to fluid retention as well as eventually it also leads to blood pressure that is bp gets increased now what are the treatments that are available for this kidney failure the first kind of treatment that is mostly preferred is dialysis and the other one is nothing but transplantation surgeries 
so dialysis is nothing but it's an alternative kidney so here it uh, there are like mainly two processes in this dialysis the first thing is hemodialysis where the blood is filtered well and the other one is peritoneal dialysis so in hemodialysis here you can see there is a specialized unit in the hospital so here what happens is blood is taken from the patient through one catheter to this machine and later it gets purified in the machine and a purified blood is again sent back to the patient so this process is called as hemodialysis so whenever the kidneys stop working or uh, whenever there are like uh, problem with the kidneys when the filtration problem occurs so generally we prefer hemodialysis technique and for suggesting this technique there are few diagnostic tests that leads to suggestion of this hemodialysis like when the creatinine levels are high in the blood because the kidney cannot filter it well so that leads to increase in the urea creatinine all these uh, components in the blood and at that stage we will be recommending hemodialysis so the other one is peritoneal dialysis so uh, in short peritoneal dialysis means it is dialysis that is will be taken place in abdomen so for this what happens is there is a minor surgery where a tube will be inserted inside the peritoneum that is nothing but abdomen that is related stomach region outside the stomach region this tube is inserted and a sort of liquid is uh, transferred through that tube and later the liquid in the abdomen absorbs all the impurities as well as toxins that are present in the blood so after absorption like 4 to 5 hours like 4 to 6 hours of duration usually it takes 4 to 6 hours of duration and later that impurities are sent back to other bag so this is called as peritoneal dialysis preferably like four sessions per day are done on a patient with the peritoneal dialysis to bring back the blood parameters in the mob so the last option is surgery here nothing but a donor's kidney will be taken and that will be transplanted to the uh, recipient like who is having problem with the kidney if like for getting this surgery done there are many diagnostic tests like uh, a chronic kidney failure like a long term kidney failure is the indication that is the main cause of this transplantation surgery next so how will we know that whether any person is having this kidney disease or not so there are few symptoms and signs for this to predict whether the patient is having kidney disease so you don't have to see all these things and you don't have to get worried because these are, there are many generalized signs that matches for each and every condition so even a hypoglycemia looks like the patient will be very weak and sometimes like they don't feel they feel very tired and they don't feel get, they, they don't get motivated and all these things will be there so there will be some generalized signs in the early stages of kidney disease but a proper diagnosis only uh, uh, judges whether the person is having a kidney disease or not so when it comes to other signs and other symptoms the patient will feel very weak like he wo jaldi jaldi thak jata hai tiredness will be there and also they usually feel this sort of vomiting and nausea feelings will be there and here you can see bubbling of the urine this is nothing but the urine will be will look very foamy foamy sort of urine this is because as i mentioned like the filtration efficiency decreases so that leads to increase in the proteins in the urine so this eventually that that leads to proteinuria loss of proteins in the urine so that loss of proteins will lead to this bubbling nature of the urine so there you can see a sort of turbid like you can see foamy urine 
here and also decreased urinary output and also like sometimes what happens even the person might be suffering with some sort of allergies this is due to uncontrolled blood sugars might also be the reason for this so other things like shortness of breath and as i mentioned like swelling around the eyes as well as the lower extremities like legs that leads to edema and frequent urination during night time that is called as nocturia so these are the common symptoms when it comes to diabetic kidney disease so these symptoms may also match with some other conditions but one should make sure that they are maintaining their blood sugars in a well controlled manner then they don't have to worry about any sort of complication so next comes like what are the diagnostic tests we usually prefer to diagnose this sort of kidney disease like diabetic kidney disease the first thing we are going to do is we are going to check like whether albumin like proteins are there inside the urine if those are more than like 20 to 40 percent then it's like albuminuria is considered and it might be uh, due to diabetic kidney disease one of the cause may be diabetic kidney disease so presence of albumin in the blood and uh, other things like measuring the blood pressure and other blood tests like complete blood picture is there any infection like blood picture is required to rule out the things like uh, if there is any infection there will be increase in the count of wbc as well as other biopsy tests and also kidney ultrasound to know whether the kidneys are having any sort of like other complications any sort of swellings like nephritis like thing or any sort of infections like see the uh pyelonephritis like different kind of infections in the kidney you can rule out with the help of this kidney ultrasound so if someone has diabetes and they are not sure whether they are having uh, so kidney disease or not so they are not sure like how to prevent this kidney disease then comes the ways to prevent this reduce the risk of kidney disease so first and foremost point is strictly control your blood sugar levels so as i mentioned uncontrolled blood sugar levels only will lead to complications if maintained properly the patient the, the person may be without any complications in his whole life he may not have any complication and he can lead a happy and healthy life if a blood sugar range is controlled well okay so when it comes to controlling of the blood sugar like there are different ways of controlling this blood sugar the first thing is like everyone says that you have to bring a change in your diet and you have to change the lifestyle yeah it's a kind of true thing like if you bring change to your lifestyle there is possibility like this type 2 diabetes can be reversed in the early stages like pre diabetic stage and not only that even during diabetic stage if some precautions are taken and a healthy lifestyle is followed then the sugars will be within normal ranges like a normal person without diabetes so here when it comes to the first and foremost thing what you have to consider is diet so many people will say like a proper diet chart and a proper diet following is required for this yeah you have to follow that is a right thing but the simple making simple simple changes in your daily life can also bring a a different like a very good effect on your blood sugars the first and foremost thing in that is like everyone would like to have some food uh, in the morning like when a proper timing like maintaining a proper timing for breakfast and later lunch and keeping a time gap of at least 2 hours between each and every meal helps in maintaining blood sugars in normal ranges and as a simple uh, to mention like simple uh, 
changes in your diet like if you are taking something like for every day for suppose you think like a person is having three idlis at breakfast for his uh, for his breakfast so a simple change like making instead of three idlis taking something like two and of idlis uh, reducing a portion of the meal usually helps in controlling your blood sugar also like later if you like at a time you shouldn't cut the food that you are taking like later if you are comfortable with two and off later like again after two months you can reduce a little bit the other half also and you can just take two idlis like you can reduce a portion of your food that brings a lot of effect on your blood sugars like it helps you helps you in a very better manner to control your blood sugar the other one the same trick you can apply on lunch in lunch as well as dinner also if someone is taking like three to four rotis for lunch so they can uh, comfortably make it to three and each and after each and every meal following a, like a simple walk of 20 minutes 20 to 30 minutes usually brings a lot of difference in your post prandial blood sugars so each after each and every meal particularly after the heavy meals like lunch and dinner prefer to do any like for women they can do the household work immediately after having the major meals you shouldn't prefer to sit the first thing is just having a walk like a relaxed walk or any brisk sort of brisk type of walk anything for 20 to 30 minutes usually helps after this so before going to bed at least you have to do your dinner 2 hours prior to going to the bed this is a very strict rule you have to follow this because whenever you go to sleep you have to feel like you are you are tummy is very light you have to feel that it shouldn't be like uh, its satiety levels are complete or it shouldn't you shouldn't feel that fullness you should feel a little bit of emptiness so try to maintain that before sleep and try to complete your dinner at least 2 hours before sleep okay so by taking these small small things and bringing few lifestyle changes like as i said like of the having every meal like major meals like lunch and dinner having a simple walk and following some simple steps following some dietary changes usually bring a lot of change in your blood sugar management so the other one other potential risk factor is nothing but blood pressure blood pressure is uh, this is the in this blood pressure you can say that people the main uh, triggering factor here is many people will find hypertension due to emotional imbalance also that happens even with the blood sugar but there is more probability with blood pressure like whenever the person feels stressed or whenever the person feels uh, like emotionally in a tensed way the blood pressure will increase that happens to many people not for all this is not a generalized thing but many people can experience this so here keeping the blood pressure in control requires many relaxation techniques so the first thing i want to mention here is these relaxation techniques should give peace of mind to you whatever relaxation technique you do it shouldn't be like you are overthinking on that or something it should give peace of mind to you so something like meditation or anything that works for you hearing a light music or something like speaking to your near ones or dear ones or sharing your problems anything anything might bring this blood sugar, blood pressure levels normal so other than this you have to control your salt intake so the salt intake per day it shouldn't increase more than 2 grams and to say precisely not a taking a salt intake of 1.5 to 1.6 grams per day helps a lot to control this blood pressure 
So other than this, taking your medication at the right time and even the exercises and uh, leaving the bad habits like smoking, alcohol, all this will help in controlling the blood pressure. Next is, yeah, for, for diabetes or for hypertension, taking medication for the right time as prescribed by the doctor will definitely help. So how to treat this UTI infections promptly? So urinary tract infections, you shouldn't neglect this sort of simple urinary tract infections. In this urinary tract infections, the main symptoms and times what you are going to see is, the first thing is burning sensation in the urine. You will feel that sort of burning sensation where urinating and even the frequency, like the number of times you are using washroom and for urination also increases. And you could also, in ladies especially, they can feel sometimes the pelvic pain due to this urinary tract infection. Not only that, it, during urination, you can even feel the pain also. If neglected, sometimes there are few conditions in which blood can also be seen in this infection. So the first and foremost thing what you have to do is taking a lot of water usually helps. Like at least three to four liters of water really helps this. And some studies have even shown that taking cranberry juice it helps in relieving the urinary tract infections. Other than that, uh, following all the proper hygienic habits and uh, taking all the uh, uh, all the like you have to follow few steps like when this hygienic process are involved like uh, taking uh, like washing the private parts whenever required all this will help in reducing the urinary tract infection so if a you if a person is having recurrent urinary tract infection and a diagnosis then diagnosis is much and sometimes if the person is having conditions like kidney stones, then he might face this problem of recurrent urinary tract infection. So as I said, like water, water helps a lot in balancing all the metabolism in our body. It usually, not only water, avoiding all the non-alcoholic beverages, like avoiding all the alcoholic beverages and preferring the non-alcoholic beverages, mainly fluids like Sometimes you can prefer this coconut water if you are not having any side effects like any cold or asthma-like problems or anything for that. You can happily opt two coconuts per week. So that even helps you in regulating your electrolytes like sodium, potassium. So you can opt that. That's a healthy way. And maintain healthy weight and the other things like lower your stress and uh, habits like you have to quit some habits like smoking alcohol so in the same way like bringing the body into control is an art and you can easily adapt that art and you can help to rejuvenate your body like you can make your body disease free by adapting small small things by making dietary changes by giving proper sleep to your body proper peace to your body and all this will make your body healthy day by day. So sleep well, a proper sleep hygiene, like timely sleeping and having sufficient amount of sleep is very much necessary to control such sort of metabolic disorders like diabetes, hypertension. And following a routine exercise and walking, all this will also help. Whatever suits you, just following some sort of exercise will every time help you and keep all these like diabetes, hypertension in control. So work with your health coach and to develop a di diabetic diet meal, like nothing more like in a sufficient proper manner, sufficient portions and limit your salt intake. Um, so this brings us to the end of the presentation. So to speak promptly, like, as I said, like making very simple. What are the key aspects you need to? 
uh, hi dr bhavna so you need to go to the next slide we have some quiz question for the users just to check how much information have they understood they have received a poll on their screen and they just need to select one option if you, you can read the question and the options for them yeah so what are the key aspects you need to take care to prevent this diabetes kidney disease so strictly control the blood pressure and blood sugar is the first one maintain healthy weight and stay hydrated follow a healthy lifestyle good sleep and exercise regularly and all the above these are the options you have for this question yes so for all our users you have received a poll on your screen you just have to select a response and submit once you do that we'll receive a detailed information about what is the response you have provided let's see how many of you have understood dr bhavna's discussion today Uh, Dr. Bhavna, would you like to discuss the results? Dr. Bhavna, would you like yeah, to yeah. discuss the results? Yeah. So, so all our participants have given like the fourth option, all the above. So I am happy for that. Like. everyone who have attended this were able to understand like what all i have spoken till now thank you for that over to you dr ah uh, yes dr bhavna we can move ahead we we'll have some more information to help our yes. users and yes. you can continue your discussion yes so there are many ways in which technology is also contributing for maintaining this healthy lifestyles and there are many applications you can find when wealthy is contributing a lot to their patients through health coach connections and you can opt any one of that and you can reach out to the health coach if you have any doubts like even the minor symptoms or anything you can discuss with the health coach and also you can if required then you can approach your treating doctor so there are many experiences with different patients how well they help them and how they help how especially how their blood sugars came to control how their hba1c has decreased and now how well they are maintaining their blood sugars so there are many examples here here you can see two of our patients like how it helped during the pandemic time so there are like many patients even elderly patients and, and like now we are having like 45k plus patients who really love this program and who get connected to our health coaches who bring the like now they are happy by bringing their blood sugars into control here also you can see like there are different options where you can opt any of the plan or anything to get this done so our there are in different kinds of clinical researchers and we even published in one to some national and international bodies and there are some real time evidences and studies where we have successfully reduced like 60% of the patients 1.17% of hba1c as well as the main weight weight also has been lost like 2.36 kg of main weight loss you can see so play an active role and you just reduce your stress and try to maintain your blood sugars as well as blood pressure and try to know what your body requires and how to get your body into control so this is a, this is a very good phenomenon like you can try different things healthy recipes on 
yourself and you can well control the diabetes as well as hypertension any sort of metabolic syndrome you can happily control so this slide brings us to the end of the presentation thank you so much and over to you rutija sure uh, first of all thank you so much dr bhavna i think kidney health uh cannot be explained in more simple terms than this before we move ahead uh if you can summarize what all are the takeaway points for our users because this was a short lived discussion so if you can summarize that what are the takeaways uh if you can tell them on a day to day basis what are the tips they need to follow so that with diabetes they do not get any kidney disease yeah so as i mentioned earlier if blood sugars are maintained properly like if there is well control on your blood sugars you don't have to worry about the complications like the person can lead a happy and healthy life by controlling his blood sugars without any complications in his entire life so first thing and first and foremost thing as i mentioned making some dietary changes and following some sleep patterns and reducing stress as well as following some healthy habits all this usually helps apart from that if you think that now you are weight is poor or you are obese then you you need to decrease your cut down your calories decrease your weight and you should get back to healthy weight in order to maintain this proper blood sugar levels so so there are few uh, studies and evidences that has shown like if a man is having a waistline that the width of the waistline is if it is more than 40 inches or if a woman is having like more than 38 inches then they are prone to metabolic syndromes or other metabolic conditions like diabetes so by keeping your weight in control usually avoids all these conditions and you can lead a healthy and happy life by maintaining your weight as well as by maintaining all your diet and other healthy habits so these are the simple tips i want to mention here if anyone has any doubt yeah i am very happy to answer you can come up with your questions sure Sure, Dr. Bhavna. Thank you so much for that summary. We have a few questions. I will discuss that one by one with you. Let me first check with our users what they have for us. Uh, meanwhile, you can check the chat box. I will yeah. uh, discuss on the questions for you. All right. Hello, Mr. Ishwaran. Thank you so much for being associated with us. we uh, will help you with your query so mr ishwaran is asking us dr bhavna that he 67 years old what should be his ideal target of sugar levels okay and how can he avoid kidney disease okay so ishwaran like are you having diabetes or is he free from diabetes is he a non diabetic i just need to know because for a normal person as you all know like a blood pressure a blood sugar fasting blood sugar of within 110 uh, within 110 mg per dl is considered as normal like 110 to 120 mg per dl is considered as pre diabetic stage so anywhere it's like in a fasting blood sugar something like within 110 mg per dl is considered not so you can maintain that blood sugar when it comes to postprandial levels again if a postprandial blood sugar of 140 less than 140 mg per dl is considered normal and a postprandial blood sugar of 140 to uh, at most like 200 mg per dl is considered as pre diabetic so If for a healthy blood sugar levels you have to be within 140 mg per dl as you have mentioned like your age is above 60 a 10 mg per dl of uh, fluctuation in your blood sugar like more than this range usually works there is no need to get tense for that 
great thank you so much dr bhavna i hope mr shrinivasan we helped you with the response for your question i hope you are happy with our response uh, we have few more questions dr bhavna uh hello rashmi ji kaisi hain aap i hope you are taking good care of your health thank you so much for joining the aki check well the webinar for today uh rashmi ji dr bhavna has shared some details of her routine checkups and she says that they are little on the higher end so what could be done in this uh, scenario so uh, i will give the clinical part to you but just for your reference rashmi ji um we have a special support program which is specially uh curated for diabetes and kidney health diabetes and support on kidney health so if you want to know more how to upgrade to that plan what are the changes if you are not already on a plan how to go about it please drop in a chat message to your health coach just ask her what is the special plan for diabetes and kidney care and she'll absolutely get back to you uh meanwhile dr bhavna some levels wherein if you can give some generalized tips to rashmi ji so that she can start her uric acid is 6.4 her protein is 8.4 and her albumin is 5.2 okay so so she hasn't mentioned the condition she is having uh she could be suffering from ckd based on our level it's not right. sure whether right. it's right. Uh, right. what is the underlying cause? cause we are unaware of the underlying cause exactly yes so uh, rashmi ji and i wanted to know the first thing whether your blood sugars are in control or not yeah as you mentioned like the protein bit is a little bit high it's high i can say it's high uh aap ye kar sakte hai ki as i mentioned like you have to take your medication regularly this should be done and you should consult your treating doctor if there is anything like if you notice any sort of pain or any sort of discomfort while urinating that is must function apart from that i can say that you can follow a as prithuja uh, also mentioned like you can follow some particular dietary recommendations like you can take a healthy food but in some conditions particularly when it comes to indian context we usually say that not to take so much of calcium related components or anything like that is more into calcium not to go with that and we even have some misperceptions like not to be take leafy vegetables along with tomato some will be following this and some may not be following so there is no proper research to support this but a healthy diet usually helps and one more thing is i just wanted to know your blood sugar ranges also uh, you have given me the protein thing the other thing but i just wanted to know how controlled your blood sugars are because if your blood sugars are not under control then we need to take a step like how to control that if you are already maintaining good proper blood sugars then there, there is no need to control that sure. you just have to take medication for your kidney itself correct so uh, dr bhavna so sorry to interrupt uh, rashmi ji has responded she okay. has shared her hba1c on the chat box which is okay. 6.6 so she says the hba1c is under control but her uh, uric acid her protein levels are a little on the slightly higher end so don't worry rashmi ji me and my team can create a customized plan just for you i hope dr bhavna you agree with that Uh, we yes, have our yes, in-house doctors who can work for your condition who can help you create specific therapeutic plans and uh, for more information please reach out to your health coach thank you dr bhavna let's move on to the next question i hope this helps rashmi ji awaiting your feedback um, and hcavc is a little it's on higher end only you have to control that you have to bring it to normal level rashmi ji aap ye karna hai ki usko normal range ko play karana hai yes yes thank you so much dr bhavna uh, we have mr gopina hello mr gopina i am very happy that you are attending all our webinar sessions regularly from past few weeks thank you so much 
I and my entire team are very happy and privileged that you are a part of our sessions. So, Dr. Bhavna, uh, Mr. Gopinath wants to know if you can suggest any kind of vegetables or fruits which can improve, uh, you know, or which can reduce his kidney damage, or uh, any kind of supplements. Ideally, are suggested like you know he says cod liver oil tablets or any kind of brands he should go for. So, what do you suggest on that? Uh, can I know the name of the patient? What's the name of the patient? You are saying? Sure. So, name yeah. of the patient is Mr. Harish Gopina. Uh, so, Harish ji, yeah, I have seen the question like what you have asked. The thing is like. So now you don't have to take any sort of supplementation. We never support any sort of supplementation, any sort of plan. The first thing is in your, yeah, you have asked like what fruits and vegetables. You can take all the fruits, but the thing is, if you are suffering with diabetes, you should only take a portion of the fruit. If it's complete apple, you just have to consume half of it. I don't recommend you to consume whole apple. But there are some fruits like Mozambique, which are carrying very low glycemic index. So those fruits you can take like a half of the fruit you can take, but never consider the whole fruit. Apart from the vegetables, you can consume all the vegetables, but some people are allergic to few vegetables like brinjal and kindly avoid such things if you are allergic to anything. Apart from that, you can have all the fruits and vegetables. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhavna. Uh, I hope he is happy. Uh, we have few more questions. Let's go through them. Uh, hello, Vivek ji. Good evening. I am very happy to have you as a part of our weekly webinars. Thank you so much for being associated with us. Uh, so, Dr. Bhavna, Vivek ji wants to know what are the standard precautions, okay, wherein each diabetic person can follow that can help them so that their disease doesn't progress to a kidney problem or to a kidney issue so that they can follow all those basic precautions regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. So Vivek Ji, the thing is like, once if you are diagnosed with diabetes, you have to take your medication regularly. That is the first instruction. You don't, you shouldn't skip your medication. But sometimes like if you are consuming less food, or if you are not consuming anything like because of any reason, so that day you can avoid your medication if you are not consuming your dinner or lunch or anything. So apart from that, when it comes to uh, any dietary standard protocols, is the first thing is a dietary recommendation of uh, fruits and vegetables with low glycemic index are usually preferred. So as Vrituja mentioned, we can make a customized plan for you. So you can follow if you if you are willing to, you can just follow that. And other than that, like if you are consuming, as I said that, if you are taking for suppose, like you are taking some five to six degrees that makes your satiety levels, like it, it, it fulfills your satiety levels. If we think that, like your stomach becomes full with that four to five days then make it short to four days. Like reduce your food intake first. Reduce your food intake and increase the gap between each and every meal. That as I mentioned, like a minimum of two hours is required. Then later of the two hours, if you feel hungry, then you can have one more day. Like divide your portion of food and take it with a timely gap. This is the best practice like any diabetic person can do. And eventually you will see that difference in your blood sugar maintenance. And as I mentioned, like every after every major meal, like lunch or dinner, just prefer to walk for 20 to 30 minutes. This also brings your blood sugar levels to normal. So, and one more thing, regularize your sleep. If a diabetic is not going to sleep for a minimum number of hours, then there are chances like their blood sugar levels might fluctuate or increase. So, Keep a proper sleep hygiene, maintain proper sleep timing, and eventually you are going to control your blood sugar very well. Great. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Bhavna, for that detailed explanation. We have a few more questions from our users. Let's listen to them one by one. Um, Mr. Sanjeev, hello, hi, good evening. Thank you for joining today's session and thank you for your active participation. So, Dr. Bhavna, Sanjeev ji wants to know how much HbA1c level is normal. HbA1c, the normal level is 5.6. 5.6% is considered as non-diabetic. But when it comes to diabetic, something maintaining around like within 6% 6 of HbA1c is also considered good. But according to the condition of the patient, if he is having his diabetic levels are uh, like his blood sugar levels are too much high and slowly he is in a pace to reduce his blood sugar levels, then it's okay to bring the HbA1c in a, in a, a systematic manner, in a timely manner. So for now, any range between like something within 6% is fair and good for a diabetic patient. And we'll be trying to bring it back to normal thing like 5.6. HbA1c is nothing but it is the three months of your glucose levels, which we can measure in a single test. So that is mean of the three months of your glucose levels in the body. So okay. even if one month it's going to be in control, then the HbA1c will definitely get down. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhavna. I hope uh, Mr. Sanjeev is happy with your response. Uh, we have a few more questions. Let's address them. Hello, Yadav ji. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining today's session. I am very happy with your active participation in today's session. Absolutely amazing to have you as a part of our AccuCheck Wealthy family. So, Mr. Yadav has dropped in few questions. I will combine them and I will ask you. I feel frequent urination in winter or when it's raining, but not in summer. What could be the problem? It's so in night that it disturbs my sleep. My sugar levels are between 100 to 180. I don't have any foamy urine. Color is white, water-like. Uh, blood pressure is around 120 to 80. What could be the reason? Okay. So, Yadavji, the thing is like many people will feel this sort of frequent urination during winter. You don't have to stress on that. But the other thing is your blood pressure level is normal and there is no foamy thing in your urine and the color is also normal. But your blood sugar levels are 100 to 180. So, anything that is above 140 after post prandial like after meal, is considered like pre-diabetic stage. Mm -hmm. In pre-diabetic stage, there may be increase in the frequency of urine. So the best thing what you can do is you have to check your blood sugars at least in two instances, that is both fasting as well as postprandial. Then only we can come to a diagnosis whether you are having a pre-diabetic stage or normal stage. If you are considered to be in pre-diabetic stage, like as I mentioned, like small changes in your diet and your lifestyle as well as exercises and bringing uh, your weight to normal, all this will help in getting back to normal stage. You don't have to stay in this pre-diabetic stage. Great, great. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bhavna, for that explanation. I hope, uh, Yadav ji, we answered your questions. For more information, no worries. If you still want to connect with our doctors, want to know information, drop in a chat message to your health coach and we will convey it to our doctor's team and they will provide you with a response. We have a few more questions, Dr. Bhavna. Let's address them. Hello, Sanjeev ji. I can see a few more questions from you. So, Mr. Sanjeev wants to know, Dr. Bhavna, what TDS level of water is good for kidneys? And water stored in plastic bottles, are they, is it safe for drinking? Many myths have that, uh, you know, it's not good to have water in plastic utensils, plastic storage. What is your take on this? And what do you suggest to all our AccuCheck Wealthy family on plastic bottle drinking of water? Thank you for this question, Sanjeevji. The first thing is like, yeah, as we all know, plastic is not at all good for health. Like drinking water from a 
glass bottle or something the other metal bottle something like steel is most preferable than considering plastic and even the storage of water in plastic things carries many toxins within the water we also know that even it is not good for our environment we are discarding it so kindly avoid plastic so don't consider plastic the other one is like um, you are you wanted to ask like how much of water is good for kidneys so in a normal person a daily intake of 3 to 4 liters of water usually helps that is minimum intake you can take how much of water you need there is no problem just it increases your frequency of urine in some people so it usually increases if you take more water it does but it in the same way it flushes all the toxins and all the bad waste from your body so drinking water is a very good habit you can take how much liters of water you require in a normal healthy person but when it comes to a person with kidney disease in few conditions there is limitation to water they have to only consume 1 to 2 liters at least like within 1 liter of water in few kidney disease conditions so keeping that in mind you can follow this instructions okay thank you so much dr babna we have few more questions and users are absolutely active today and want to ask a lot of information okay. to our special guest thank you so much for being available for them uh, mr vivek says that he has brittle diabetes he uses sensor and takes rapid insulin and long acting insulin do i still have kidney risk i take walk regularly and i'm well hydrated so taking insulin doesn't have it it's not a predisposing factor like it's not a condition that leads to any kidney disease or nothing taking insulin is a right way to keep your blood sugars normal there's nothing wrong with that if you you are going to maintain your blood sugars in a normal range like as i mentioned like timely check with the glucometer or active check like bringing back like how much of uh, fasting blood sugar you are having and postprandial blood sugar you are having and after checking if you feel that that is in, in a highest and or higher side like making changes accordingly and maintaining semi like same sort of blood uh, sugar values for longer duration will keep all these complications away so you don't have to fear about the complications if you are maintaining your blood sugars normal if you are maintaining your blood sugars normal then the then you are considered as non diabetic like you are a healthy person you don't have to worry about that amazing thank you so much dr bhavna uh, we have few more questions uh, mr harish gopinath uh wants to know which is the best cooking oil for diabetic patients yeah harish ji like uh, you have asked the right question like these studies and we usually recommend our patients based on studies and researches and as you know due to different uh, like in different times like different oils have been recommended by we doctors to our patients like previously it was like we have recommended to go with sunflower oil like it carries a very uh, it's uh, it's very thin oil when compared to groundnut and nut now the later picture is like now we are recommending olive oil for this but it may not suit for everyone like every vegetable oil acts in a different way on different person so you can even prefer groundnut oil but the best thing is now olive oil the researchers have shown that oil oil has a very good result and uh, good output in case of diabetic patients so you can use that but you need to check the brand very well you need to check what brand is good and what is giving a very good quality oil so you need to do your research great thank you so much dr bhavna wow what a wonderful set of information today we have exchanged with our entire architect wealthy family i am very happy to host you for today's session it's been a pleasure being with you understanding the basics of kidney health how does it affect diabetes and what all other things which are essential to ensure that 
आगे जाके पेशेंट्स को डायबिटीज की तकलीफ किडनी डिजीज में ना टर्न आउट हो फॉर ऑल आर लवली एक्यूचेक वेल्दी फैमिली समराइजिंग टूडे डिस्कशन इन हिंदी किडनी का ख्याल रखना डायबिटीज में बहुत जरूरी है चार पांच चीजें आपको रेगुलर बेसिस पे करनी है सबसे पहले आपकी ब्लड शुगर को नियंत्रण में रखना है कॉन्स्टेंटली उसको चेक करना है ये इंश्योर करना है कि कहीं पे भी आपकी जो ब्लड शुगर लेवल है वो ज्यादा नॉर्मल से बड़े नहीं अगर आपको इसकी मोर इंफॉर्मेशन चाहिए हमारे प्लान अभी सेल पे चल रहे हैं डिस्काउंट्स पे चल रहे हैं आप अपने हेल्थ कोचेस से बात कीजिएगा दे विल गाइड यू ऑन हाउ टू गो अबाउट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर प्लान नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग जो आज हमने सीखी डेली थर्टी मिनट्स एक्सरसाइज करना किडनी हेल्थ के लिए बहुत अच्छा है शुगर लेवल को भी कंट्रोल करता है ब्लड प्रेशर पे नियंत्रण रखना बहुत जरूरी है स्ट्रेस आपके किडनीज पे अफेक्ट कर सकता है नॉट डायरेक्टली बट डेफिनेटली इनडायरेक्टली बहुत जरूरी है स्ट्रेस पर्सनल प्रोफेशनल और फिजिकल कोई भी तरह का स्ट्रेस हमको नहीं लेना है डाइट नियंत्रण में रखना बहुत जरूरी है अगर ये सारी चीजें आप करेंगे आपका एच अंडर कंट्रोल रखेंगे आपको आपकी डायबिटीज का प्रोग्रेशन होने से बचाना आसान हो जाएगा आपका डायबिटीज आगे बढ़ेगा नहीं और जो हार्ट किडनी आंखें आपका ओवरऑल बॉडी ऑर्गन्स उस पर जो इफेक्ट होता है वो नहीं होगा ये था हमारे आज के सेशन का डिस्कशन आई होप आपने जो भी सारे पर्सनल क्वेश्चंस पूछे सभी का सलूशन हमने आपको प्रोवाइड किया है इसके अलावा और कोई क्वेरीज है और कोई जानकारी आपको चाहिए प्लीज अप्रोच योर हेल्प कोचेस आर टीम विल डेफिनेटली हेल्प यू आउट मीन वाइल थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर भावना फॉर कनेक्टिंग विथ आर एक्चेक वेल्दी फैमिली वी आर हैप्पी टू हैव यू विथ अस Thank you so much, Prithuja. I am really happy to answer all the questions of our viewers. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhavna. For our AccuCheck Wealthy family, next week we are coming up with a new session, new topic, a new speaker, and a lot of new information. Meanwhile, don't forget to give us your feedback about today's session with Dr. Bhavna. Thank you so much for your time. Till then, take care of your health. Bye bye. See you next week take care of your health bye bye